And hello there folks, this is your Uncle Troy, and today we're going to talk about the Berenstein Bear Problem. And uh, so first thing I want you to do is I want you to think back to when you were a kid, did your parents read to you from the Berenstein uh, Bears book? Or did you read, as a young child, the Berenstein Bears book yourselves? Or as an adult, did you read the Berenstein Bears book to your children? Uh, big series of books. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you to please try to remember, how do you spell Berenstein? Just think about that. And we'll get back to that here in just a minute. So uh, this is a video log, another video log without video, because I'm having some trouble with my USB webcam and my uh, video handheld video recorder is sitting over in the corner charging on this little USB charger. Apparently I had plugged it in to a USB port on my computer the other day which did not supply sufficient power to actually charge it so it just sat there with this little yellow light blinking and uh, when I went to use it today I found out oh we still got only two minutes worth of video recording time left so it's been plugged into a different uh, connector one that provides more power so we'll see what happens um, so I'm also still having some technical difficulties in fact part of the reason why I'm recording this today is that um, I got a small piece of hardware in the mail, a little SLI bridge that I'm going to try to install later. And, uh, well, as any time you make a hardware change on your computer, there's always the chance that it's not going to boot back up afterwards and you're going to spend three days or more just trying to get back to the point you were before you started improving it. So in case I you don't hear any messages from me for a while, it's because my, I killed my computer. Okay, so back to the Berenstein Bears. Uh, myself, I always spelled it B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E and once in a while, um, I've had people say, well, I think it's spelled S-T-I-E-N. Uh, once in a while, I'd encounter people like that. So uh, I checked my circle of family and friends, and everybody remembers it S-T-E-I-N that it could not be I-E-N and in fact I had people pretty much get irate with me that suggested is it possible you misremembered it and it was E-I-N no 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 it's I-E it's it's excuse me they got upset when it's possible suggest the possibility it might be I-E-N no 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 everybody was adamant it's S-T-E-I-N and it's pretty much the same story no my parents used to read these books to me when I was a kid um, or uh, I read them myself because I was a precocious reader, or I read these to my children. I've seen the titles a million times. I've seen the name in the book a million times. I know it's B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E -E and I said, so if I've sent you to a website or a YouTube link uh, where there's a picture or somebody talking to the author or whatever and said, no, 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 the name is S-T-I-E-N, would you believe it? No, we would not believe it. We would think you faked that website, that you faked that YouTube video, because there's no way in heck it could be anything other than B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N, -E -E which is fine. So you've had time to think about it and yourself, so how do you think it's spelled? And if you're like everybody in my circle of friends, everybody in my circle of family, everybody I checked with on Facebook, and 90% of the people I talked to on Reddit you're going to say it's spelled B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E -E okay, prepare to have your mind blown. You are wrong. It is actually spelled B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N. -E -E Berenstain. However, since it's German, and with German, when you have two, let two vowels, the second one is the one that you sound out. It's actually Berenstein. And it turns out when the Berenstein family came to America the immigration official who processed their paperwork basically said what's the family name and they said Bernstein now B-E-R-S-T-I-E-N or something like that so the immigration officer did not know how to spell Bernstein so he did his best and typed and uh, wrote out this is before you typed in things in the computers but he wrote out basically B-E-R-E-N-S-T a-I-N, and that's as close as he could get to Bernstein. So the family name became Berenstein. 
because like I said German pronunciation and so and over the years it has been that it it's not a case of well we thought Berenstein was you know it the books have always said Berenstein I'm going to pronounce it Berenstein because you know it's A-I-N so it's not a case of well when you were a kid it was Berenstein and then they changed it and corrected it later no it's always been Berenstein and if you remember it otherwise you're crazy basically and you're well according to the most diehard skeptics I don't believe in anything people what happened is one person put it on the internet that they remembered it as Berenstein S-T-E-I-N and because we're all a bunch of gullible sheep when we saw that somebody had put it in print we all altered our memories so that we all remembered it as Berenstein now taking 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 into consideration that 90% of the people that I talked to about this had never put any thought into it and s since they were children or since they had read to their own children they had not gone off and searched the internet looking for this they had not seen anybody write it wrong in a, on a website they had not seen anybody pronounce it wrong on a YouTube they simply I simply asked them about it they went back to their childhood memories and like I said everybody in my personal circle everybody on Facebook that I talked to about it everybody on 90% of the people on reddit all came out with S T E I N Berenstein now I'm going to tell you my personal story and how it's not a case of well I read it somewhere on the internet and my brain just automatically incorporated the wrong thing into my memories uh, when I was a kid going to what we could call grammar school or elementary school grades 1 through 8 uh, we had what was called a library day uh, once a week we would skip one of our classes and go to the library where we were required to check out books now kids back in the old days a library was a place where you kept physical copies of books and even a small town backwoods hick uh, school like the one I went to um, had hundreds and hundreds if not thousands and thousands of books so every week you would go and you would uh, check one out and 90% of the time all you had to do was check it out bring it back the next week check it back in check out another book or you could check out the same book again you weren't even required to read them it's just they wanted to expose us to the process of going to a library checking out a book taking it taking it home taking it back to the class reading it whatever so but one out of ten times you were selected to do what was called a book report and you had to do a short report just a few pages on the subject of the book you just read and you would uh, write that turn it in the teacher would select a few and you would stand up in front of the class read your book report explain to people answer questions about the book just to prove that you had read it and understood it so at some point I picked up a book and I cannot remember the name and I did a Google search and apparently it doesn't exist for simply I don't know how to properly Google search about a dog it was the adventures of a dog and the dog's name was spelled S E A N. And most of you who are, are fans of movies will recognize that as the name of a guy who played James Bond back in the uh, 70s, 60s, and 70s called Sean Connery. So you would say, oh, well, the dog's name is Sean. Well, back then I hadn't seen the James Bond movies, I wasn't familiar with James Bond. So I did not know about actor Sean Connery or Sean Penn or other Sean's. So I saw S E A N. I said, okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's sound it out. The S is obviously an S sound. The N is obviously an N sound. We got E A. Um, let's see. There's a food called the bean. B E A N is pronounced bean. It's very similar to uh, S E A N. And we all know that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. That's standard English pronunciation. So obviously this dog is named Scene. So I did a book report on Scene and I was one of the ones chosen to stand up in front of class and talk about Scene. So I stood up in front of class and I gave my book report on the adventures of a dog named Scene going through the wilderness, getting the fights with wolves, etc. And at the end of the report, when the class gave me a little plot smattering of applause, the teacher said, how does Scene spell his name in that book? And I said, S-E-A-N. He says, oh, 
I don't mean to correct you, young man, but I think that's pronounced Sean. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I went out and checked and checked into some books and found out, yes, Sean was the preferred pronunciation of S-E-A-N. So time went by, and we had another book report. And this time I just happened to pick up a book called The Berenstein Bears, Some Adventure, Honeypot Hijacks or something. And so I um, wrote the book report. And I remember writing the book report, having to go back to the book repeatedly because I could not remember if it was Baron Steen, S-T-E-I-N, or if it was Baron Stein, S-T-I-E-N. So I remember going back to the book several times as I'm writing my report. And I also remember discussing with my friends, some of whom had been read the books in childhood, some of whom had read the books themselves, how do you pronounce Berenstein, because some of the uh, the kids uh, pronounced it Berenstein, some of the kids pronounced it Berenstein, and so I went with the again standard English pronunciation. When two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So S T E I N would be uh, emphasis on the e Stein, or excuse me, Steen, Berenstein. So a couple of kids said Berenstein because that was how the, their parents pronounced it, but everybody else agreed with me it was Berenstein. So I did the report. I called them the Berenstein, excuse me, the Berenstein Bears the whole time. And the reason why I keep accidentally saying Berenstein is because that's the approved pronunciation that I know is now, and I'm trying to teach myself to use the approved pronunciation from now on. Anyway, so the... Uh, I gave the report on the Baron Steen Bears. Nobody in the class corrected me. The teacher congratulated me on writing a good book, or writing a good book report, and everything was fine. And so that cemented in my mind that it was spelled B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N, and that it was pronounced Baron Steen. Okay, fast forward, she's 30 years, I guess, and I'm reading on the internet something about the Berenstein Bears is spelled wrong so I think well that's easy everybody knows how the Berenstein Bears are spelled I type it in and I end up with a dozen links to a dozen websites of people saying holy bleeping bleep I just found out I've been misspelling Berenstein Bears for the last 30 years and I thought well that's ridiculous and I click on the links and I find out that pretty much every single person Remember spelling Berenstein Bears, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N, and that they were just flabbergasted, gobsmacked, gobsmacked to find out it was S-T-A-I-N. And it was pronounced Berenstein because it's a German name, and in Germany, when you have two vowels together, the second one does the talking. So... I started reading about this, and basically a lot of people are really upset about this. They get physically ill when they find out they've been wrong all these years. And it's not, and like I said, the skeptics say this isn't a real thing. Uh, we're making it all up. That what just happened was we heard somebody spell it wrong recently, and our memories have just altered themselves so that our childhood, you know, is completely different. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink. Thank you. If I was a little more professional, I would uh, edit that out, and you would never know it. So, around and around it went, and I found out this is something called the... It's an example of something called the Mandela Effect. And it turns out uh, Nelson Mandela was a civil rights leader uh, back in the 70s and 80s uh, fighting against apartheid in South Africa. And basically, he disappeared off the face of the earth because he was put in prison. And apparently, now me and myself, I don't really have any strong memories one way or the other. I think I vaguely remember some adults talking about Nelson Mandela dying back in the 70s or 80s. I was a kid. I didn't really care about global politics. Uh, but I vaguely remember adults talking about him dying. So... But it turns out, if you do a search on this, the Mandela effect, 
uh, you will find people with very strong memories, very, very strong memories of Mel Nelson Mandela dying in the 70s or 80s. He died in prison. He died of health problems because he was being beaten regularly, not getting enough food, um, basically treated bad in prison. Surprise and surprise, people get don't get treated well in prison. And he got sick and died. And they remember it. They remember it being mentioned on the news. They remember it being mentioned on television, in newspapers, in magazines. They remember seeing his funeral on television. They remember talking about it around the water cooler. They remember if they were in school at the time, they remember their teachers stopping class to talk about Nelson Mandela and how he died and why he died and why apartheid was bad. They remember these things very, very strongly. Well, it turns out Nelson Mandela did not die in prison. He did not die in the 70s, 80s. He lived until just a few years ago. And like I said, they just remember it differently and so the and the strange thing is these people that remember it differently all remember it the same okay they remember he died in the 80s they remember he died in prison they remember it was because of the beatings and the poor food they remember the uh, uh, news coverage they remember the live TV coverage of the funeral and they all remember it that way but, of course, it didn't happen that way. So what happened? Well, a couple of theories is, one, that another civil rights leader died about that same time and maybe people got confused. Another is that uh, many years later, a, uh, a uh, standby obituary is what they call them. Uh, basically, you don't wait until a famous person dies before you write the obituary. You write the obituary first and keep it on file. That way, if the person dies suddenly, you can pull it out, can it to your newsreader, and they can say, Nelson Mandela, apartheid, blah, 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 died in his sleep, yada, yada, yada. So, apparently one of those for Nelson Mandela leaked or got exposed or something uh, some years ago. So what the skeptics who don't believe in anything say is, well, obviously, these people um, learned about that uh, premature obituary, which was released. They remembered a civil rights leader dying in the 70s or 80s, and they just put all that together in their heads, and so they manufactured the memories of Nelson Mandela dying in the 70s or 80s. The problem with that is it's not just a simple matter of we you know, misremember dying, you know, hearing him Nelson Mandela die. It's that we remember reading newspaper articles about it. We remember reading magazine articles about it. We remember it being shown on television. We remember talking about it with our coworkers. We remember s teachers in, in school stopping class to tell us about this. And it's, so it's not just one simple memory. It's a huge chunk of our lives that you are suddenly telling us is wrong. And like I said, people get physically ill when they start thinking about this. And the crazy far out there explanation is that there are, you know, there are alternate timelines, there are parallel universes where things run mostly the same as they do here on our Earth with a few minor differences. And the crazy out there solution to this problem is that in some universe, Nelson Mandela did die in the 70s, the, or in the 80s. In some universe... The Berenstain Bears were spelled B-E-R-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E -E and somehow we have managed to swap ourselves with people from another universe where Nelson Mandela died in 2013. We managed to swap ourselves with another universe where our parents read to us the Berenstain Bears, spelled S-T-A-I-N, and not the Berenstain Bears, spelled S-T-I-N. And right now, in another universe, there is a Troy Cheek, Uncle Troy, doing a webcast where he is talking about, you know, I know it was S-T-A-I-N. I remember it being S-T-A-I-N. When did it change to S-T-E-I-N? Because, like I said, that's parallel universes for you. So other things along those lines, uh, apparently uh, Patrick Swayze is still alive at least according to some people, because they remember him being very sick from cancer, but beating it and going on to make more movies or more TV shows. Uh, in this timeline, Patrick Swayze unfortunately passed away. Uh, me personally, here's one good... Okay, Sean Connery, I found out recently, is still alive. 
I had heard back in 2002, 2003, that Sean Connery had died during the filming of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, or shortly thereafter. And uh, my girlfriend, who was a big Sean Connery fan, is was very, very upset about this because it meant no more Sean Connery movies. And even though I'm not a big opening night, opening weekend, go to the movies guy, we went to the movies to see Sean Connery's in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen because we knew it would be his last film. And on opening night, or at least opening weekend, uh, we were in line with several other Sean Connery fans who were upset that this was his very last movie and they'd come to see it you know, on opening night, or at least the opening weekend, because it was his very last film and they wanted to see it and send them off, you know, so basically say goodbye. I remember, uh, I think I first heard the news on the radio that he was he'd passed away in 2002, uh, I saw, I remember seeing magazines with his face on the cover and talking about he, how he'd passed away. Uh, I'm pretty sure over the years I have seen in magazines or on the internet uh, lists of actors who died filming their last movie and how it was a shame that, you know, usually it was a sucky movie that nobody wanted to see. Um, I remember all of that. So fast forward several years, and uh, I'm reading one of those internet lists about how, you know, people whose last movies sucked and find out that, yes, Sean Connery and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was listed there, but it basically said, unlike other people on this list, uh, Sean Connery is still alive, and he can break this curse of uh, having a bad last movie by simply starring in another movie. And I'm like, that's not right, so I did a search. Well... Apparently, Sean Connery is still alive, or at least as of, uh, what is this, August 14th, 2015. Even though there's been some uh, internet hoaxes about him dying later. Uh, but Sean Connery did not die. Sean Connery actually went on to m make some minor appearances in other films. Uh, Sean Connery just had a bad experience in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and decided to mostly retire from acting. And... So it's like, okay, so according to the internet skeptics who don't believe in anything, what happened was that I saw one of the internet hoaxes here recently, uh, decided in my brain, well, I've not seen Sean Connery in the movies in a while, he must have died sometime after making League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and then my brain has manufactured all the rest of these memories to support that. Now, the problem is, it's not just that I you know, read somewhere Sean Connery is dead, and that was the end of it. Like I said, I remember hearing it on the radio. I remember seeing it on television. Uh, there was a TV station that showed a Sean Connery movie a day for an entire month to celebrate his career. Um, most of them were James Bond movies, and most of them were James Bond movies he wasn't in. But I remember the whole reason for, you know, the thing was, you know, to celebrate Sean Connery's life. Uh, I remember going to the movies on, you know, opening weekend, which I hate doing simply because it was Sean Connery's last film. Um, I remember my girlfriend being very upset. I remember reading his, you know, reading about this in the internet over the years. When I go to search the internet, I can't find any of those articles, or the articles are not the way I remember them. Uh, basically just saying Sean Connery's last movie, not Sean Connery is dead, and this is his last movie. Uh, my girlfriend, whom I'm still in contact with, uh, she does not remember seeing the movie with me. She does not remember me taking her to the movie. <laughs> Even though the only reason I would have gone to see a Sean Connery movie with bad reviews on opening weekend is if I was going because it was the very last thing and she, Sean Connery would ever make because he was dead and because she wanted me to go with her. That's the only reason I would go. So basically that started an argument about, okay, Troy, who did you go with if it wasn't me? Who else were you dating back then? Um, so anyway, like I said, this is called the Mandela Effect. Do not, do not, do not Google it. Do not read it because you will waste two days of your life like I just did. Uh, basically every spare moment has been spent everything when I'm awake and feeling well enough to sit in front of the computer. I have been Googling Berenstain Bears. Uh, Mandela Effect, Sean Connery. I'm now an expert on all these things. Uh, I do not, I actually broke my long-standing resolution, I guess you could say, New Year's resolution, to never be a part of Reddit 
and actually created a Reddit account and started posting to Reddit just because I wanted to comment on this whole Mandela effect thing. Um, so do not Google Berenstein Bears. Do not Google Mandela effect. Uh, do not pull up Google Maps and check to see where Australia is located in the ocean and where New Zealand is located in uh, relation to Australia. Do not do that because it will ruin your life, you will blow your mind, and you will never see things the same way again. Okay, so do not do all that. I've talked for, geez, 25 minutes now about this. It's going to be a little short thing. Um, technical news, uh, I had a, uh, basically I bought a second video card, identical to the first, a uh, NVIDIA GeForce 550 Ti. And I bought the second one because I'd always planned that that was the plan when I bought the computer. The 550 Ti was pretty much the f fastest, most powerful video card I could buy at the time. The plan always was to buy a second one, pair them up, uh, let them run games faster. Uh, recently I found one for a decent price. I bought it. Turns out, even though I somehow remember that the motherboard I bought had some kind of internal circuitry so that it could do the SLI without having to have a, a special bridge which is just a bunch of 16 wires connecting uh, one video card to the other. Apparently that's not the case. So I have bought the SLI bridge. It arrived earlier today. I'm about to shut down my computer, take it apart, hook up the video cards together and soon I will be running twice as fast in my games. Uh -huh. Maybe. I don't know. But it's also possible this little thing is going to fry both my video cards. I'm not going to be able to run my computer again for a while. So one way or the other. So if you don't hear from me for a while, that's why. Um, okay, um, I guess that's all I got to say today. Uh, by the way, I did recover some emails from Google Mail, and I have uh, listings of some of my video subscribers since the last time I uh, uh, gave a... Uh, hello to all my new subscribers so uh, that is coming in a n in a near future video so if you've uh, subscribed lately and been checking out the, the video logs looking for you know your name hopefully it'll be soon okay this is uncle troy signing out please have a good night